Welcome back to Sycamore and Salt, where we continue with the fourth installment of our Dogwood Campground mini-series. Open. Last episode, we tried to recover from a restless night of sleep, but it didn't take long before we were fired up and ready for another memorable day on the mountain. As the sun climbed the blue skies, we debated mortality and broke out the gel. Maybe it was standing on her squeeze to death. Later, we determined what Lake Gregory Regional Park had to offer. Okay, Cassandra, are you ready to go to Lake Gregory? All right, welcome to Lake Gregory. Place to be. From unique structures, talkative ducks, peaceful pilots. Really were. Get over a here. A mischievous puppy whose elegance was swallowed whole above and below the sparkling <laughs> surface. In this episode, we enjoy the campsite as we sizzle up some pork. The meal was exactly what we needed to get us through the next phase of the day. Join us as we explore the mountain we're camping even further. <laughs> Tin Oh yeah. <laughs> Ancient trees and robust squirrels had all of our attention. Using flashcards was even a fun experience. Check that out. Follow along and get a first hand look at what October in the California mountains is really like. Left Lake Gregory and drove a few miles back to Dogwood Family Campground. Later. All that fun in the early morning sun lit a fire beneath our appetite. You come and wake me every night. You say you miss the concept. You and I. Give me a few slices, okay? Mm -hmm. It was time to take a ride to Sizzletown with our ham and sausage. Catch my head in the earthway. Collect my spines and my feet spray. Then my feet spray. Catch my lungs in the air. Give me some food, oh, darling, please. Oh, darling. Thank 
With an afternoon hike on our minds, we decide to pack on the pounds. We tried not to burn our gullets as we relaxed and cherished this fleeting moment with nature. Would you like another piece of ham? No. It's too salty. What? I'll cut some put your sausage in there. Mm. She's so clean already, and now dirty again. And clean and dirty. Clean and dirty. <laughs> and you trying to get some? Are <laughs> you trying to get some? You have to wait. You have to wait for it. Be patient. It's hot. Are you going to chew it this time? No, it's kind of warm. Hold on. I'm going to have Cassandra carry my water. There you go. We're going to share it. The, it's the, you know, the prizer thing. And then well, you, you can need to have it equal on both sides. I don't know, we could put some stuff there that we might not want to carry, like the cards or battery or... She has the water bottle in here. See, Warren? I'm gonna bring some treats for her. It might even fit on top of this thing. After tossing essentials into Cassandra's new pack, we try to determine a suitable place for her GoPro. For a hike, sweetie. <laughs> we go for a hike. Sandra, you ready to go? Let's go for a walk. Come on, let's go for a walk. All right, let's go. In the trail. Come on. Launching a tactical explorer team simultaneously into a realm of new adventure can be a challenge at times. But where there's a will, there's a way. This was our first try with a camera behind her ears. In this video, we'll discover her pack works better at holding the GoPro, especially when the bag's full and level.
The Enchanted Loop Trail is supposed to be a short, easy loop trail located in the Dogwood Campground. Along the way, we'll see types of trees including the ponderosa pine, white fir, incense cedar, and black oak. We'll also keep an eye out for wildlife as well, including squirrels, deer, and many types of birds. The plan was simple enough. Take the path of least resistance out of our campsite, number 71, into approximately this region of the mountain. Simple enough. We know that there's a trail connected to Dogwood Family Campground called Enchanted Loop, and we know it's family friendly, so this shouldn't take too long. Good place for the rock climber. <laughs> we have to set up a course. As the Forest Service used chainsaws to control timber on the mountainside, we unloaded the burden of two heavy treats from Cassandra's pack to remind her why she was weighed down. Her what? Ooh, what's in there? Is that yours? Put it in your pack, okay? Make sure that you put it in your pack. Okay, so we're fine. Let's go. Sounds like she's got a canteen in there. It's so cute. <laughs> I think she's a little soldier. This is the same route we took last night. Now that there was plenty of light, we decided to probe the heavily worn trail even further. Besides, it should loop back. We didn't bring her water, so hopefully there's water at the bottom. Well, I brought water that she can have if you just cup your hands. <clears throat> that old trick, huh? Just to wet her whistle. Yeah. Just a little bit of water for all. And there's ice, too. Well, it's probably not good. I just need a makeshift cup. She's doing a good job. Looks good on you. He was good. He was good. Look at this dogwood. I thought it had the tree in between. Mm hmm. A U.S. native, white fir is an evergreen coniferous tree which grows to mature heights of 130 feet tall. 
decorations that you would throw on a Christmas tree. But tin yeah. stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like the way they're yeah, like. the needles do look like mm -hmm. tin It is the enchanted park. The park is gray, thin, and smooth, but thickens with age. Drink some of that water and lighten the load for her a little bit. Straight-grained and non-resinous, white fur is a preferred construction species because of its strength and lightness and weight. White fur is a popular Christmas tree because of its abundant soft needles that have excellent retention. When crushed, the needles have a pungent camphor-like odor that'll remind you of bug repellent or terpene alcohol. This is an incense cedar and they're from southern British Columbia, but stretch their roots down to southern California via a mountain range called the Cascades. I can feel it growing. Incense cedar, while technically a true cedar with a narrow columnar shape when young, attains a height of 70 to 110 feet at maturity. The foliage is dark green all through the year. When young, the bark on an incense cedar is thin purplish red and scaly, but with age, as it increases to several inches thick, it'll develop a rich reddish brown color and requires a lot of moisture to truly grow to its full potential. This stuff easily burns. Oh yeah, there's sap all over. Yeah, where are these? No. I'm finding these drag marks off the trail. She's doing good. She's carrying all my stuff. <laughs> Our stuff. Snack. Deck of cards. Big cards, I guess. Yeah, she did do some swimming. She's gonna need some steak, Warren. Yeah. Got to work up an appetite first. The thought of more tasty food waiting back at camp was already dancing in our heads. Bittersweet when you don't have to pull out a poo bag. Come on, let's take your bag off. Come on. It was time for a snack break and a pop quiz. Oh, oh watch your ankles. And this was good because little did we know the loop was going to become a longer journey than expected. Watch your bag. So it's kind of heavy, but she's strong. <laughs> Next time I should just use the Two? plastic bottle.
Oh, this is the one we just hugged, I think. Maybe. No, never mind. Flip it over. Maybe it's this one actually. Pine. Maybe for this leaf that's in front of me. We might not have it here. Oh wait, is that it right there? It's peeking out. That's your oak right there. Isn't it? Pine oak. Pin but oak. There's a lot of different kinds. Let's see what Oh, oh this like is a variety of leaf. Yeah. Looks about the same. See your acorns? Let me see. see. Oh yeah. That's it right there. And then let's see the fruit. Yep, 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 yep. I see the fruit right here. This is black oak, a Kentucky native who's a member of the red oak group and can reach a staggering height of more than 100 feet. Check that out. So we got right there. Mm-hmm. With a prominent taproot, this species has a spectacular chance at surviving poor growing conditions. Even though the black oak was introduced to commerce in the early 1800s, it's not common in the nursery trade because it's difficult to transplant due to its taproot structure. That's her impatient yawn. Okay, Sandra, let me see. Something in your face, please. After losing the squirrel, Cassandra hopped back on the trail. Campground surrounded by roads and homes, we figured there was no harm in walking down the mountain on a trail that would surely loop back to the campground. So if it's heavy, it's even better. The trail would go uphill as if it was leading us back to our campsite, but then it would veer back down towards the road again. When would it stop? Will we have to walk the road back? Are we lost, but still yelling distance from people? These questions were starting to play table tennis in our heads. Oh Lucky for us, the pork scraps and tuna melting in our stomach was enough to get us through this navigational blunder. those lovely scents that would hook Cassandra's blue nose. Yeah, leave that thing alone. Leave it. The sun.
Coming upon a couple manholes for sewer on the mountain gave us hope, but the trail was still deceiving. Ponderosa pine is a large, straight trunk tree with a wide spreading root system and a deep tap root making it highly tolerant to intense drought once established. Thick bark makes a mature ponderosa fire resistant. In the wild, this beast towers at 230 feet. Many animals survive off the leaves, seeds, twigs, and bark. The snags, or standing dead trees, provide shelter for nesting and roosting wildlife. We were becoming exhausted, but it didn't keep us from honoring the presence of this dogwood tree colony, only days away from shedding their distinctive leaves. Helicopter traffic is pretty much the only downside of camping on this mountain, which isn't too bad. The young incense cedars reminded us of our campsite, and we knew that the trail was coming to a bittersweet, aromatic end. We continued to encourage each other with newfound energy. Come on, you can do it. Upon further review, we seemed to have missed the Enchanted Loop Trail 3W18 and fell onto parts of Dogwood Trail 3W04. Now I say parts because the Enchanted Loop Trail is only 0.29 miles and the Dogwood Trail is 1.2. However, we spent approximately one and a half hours walking. Getting closer. 
We may have only been hiking one and a half miles, or we may have fallen through a time warp. Who officially knows? Anyone who's ever ridden a horse will appreciate Cassandra's reaction to this next obstacle. If there's anything we can take away from this, it's to not be afraid to ask a park official about trails that interconnect with the main park trail. When there aren't any signs, it can make some amateur folk pretty dang confused. Well, let's go this way. Look at those big uh, ravens. Come on. At one point, I even tried to convince myself there would be a water source at the bottom of the hill. Getting the All right, let's go drink out of your bowl. Come on, let's go drink out of your bowl. Come on. Looks like our neighbors left. We do do it time the day. Well, there you go. There's no way around it. What are you doing? Sometimes you just have to live through the experience in order to know. And look at maps. They can help. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes are released, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. <laughs> if you're interested in seeing exclusive content, check out our Patreon link. As always, we appreciate your support. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bring out your bowl, come on.